Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China on Dong Shop. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. China is no longer just another emerging market, no more. As zero COVID dragged down China's economic growth, Beijing's crackdown on the internet tech sector and real estate developers in the last two years. Investors are cooling off. According to Morgan Stanley analysts, the share of Chinese stocks in the benchmark MSCI Emerging Markets Index fell to 32% in July this year. In October 2020, it was 43.2%. According to Bloomberg's report, the manager of a public pension fund for Texas public education employees is cutting half its target allocation to Chinese stocks, potentially cutting billions of dollars of such holdings over months. Teachers' retirement system of Texas is switching to a new tailored emerging market stock benchmark to reduce China's outsized weight in the MSCI Emerging Markets Index it once relied upon. The long-term target weight of China in its portfolio is even smaller than Taiwan. Early this year, Goldman Sachs launched an emerging markets fund that excluded China. In September, Wisdom Tree followed the suit, become the latest firm to launch non-Chinese emerging markets funds. The fundamental driving force behind this trend is political calculations, the fact that the US has named China its chief competitor. Most recently, the Biden administration further restricted China's ability to use US tech for developing advanced semiconductors. The mood has shifted. Investors no longer view China as one of the most attractive places to invest in the world. Rather. Being the chief rivalry with the US, it becomes increasingly risky bet. Investors are not going to ignore China, but the level of excitement has changed. Even though China is still an emerging market based on metrics such as per capita GDP, foreign investors would see it more as a great power opportunity. Beijing is also presenting itself as a great power. Chinese President Xi Jinping has pushed the country not only to be self-sufficient in tech and energy, but lead other nations with competing systems for finance, navigation, and international relations. For example, Global Development Initiative and Global Security Initiative. Within China, the government and the Xi has increased its role in the economy. Between 2020 and 2021, the share of state-owned enterprises in the top 10 Chinese companies rose by 3.6 percentage points. Over the last decade, the ratio is a decline of 10 percentage points. State-owned business account for more than 40% of the top 10 companies. In the open economy country, the average ratio is 2%. In the meantime, Attitude towards foreign and private companies grows increasingly hostile. There are informal barriers to market competition, such as informal discrimination against foreign and private companies, industrial policies, or the presence of Communist Party committees. Chinese law requires internal Communist Party committees for companies with at least three Communist Party members. However, enforcement began to pick up only after 2012 when Xi became the leader. An internal party committee gathers together a company's employees who are members of the Chinese Communist Party. They may then hold events such as studying Xi's thought. Since Trump administration, the US has waged low-grade economic warfare against China. Tariffs, export controls, investment blocks, visa limits, and much more. But Washington's goal has always been hazy. Does it seek to compel specific changes in Beijing's behavior or challenge the Chinese system itself to protect core security interests or retain hegemony by any means to strengthen America or outcompete its chief rival?
It became clear when, in early October, Biden administration unveiled a comprehensive strategy to move the U.S. forward and hold China back in the production of advanced semiconductors, virtually eliminating China's semiconductor industry overnight, escalating the high-tech battle with Beijing. Rhodium Group analyst Jordan Schneider wrote on October 14, Every American executive and engineer working in China's semiconductor manufacturing industry resigned yesterday, paralyzing Chinese manufacturing overnight. One round of sanctions from Biden did more damage than all four years of performative sanctions under Trump. Why is this round of sanctions so devastating? Because the U.S. Bureau of Industry and Security has put Yangtze Memory Technologies and 30 other semiconductor companies in China to the unverified list. Biden administration prevents the U.S. businesses from sending the cutting-edge processors required to run or train the most efficient AI algorithms to China. The extensive new regulations are intended to keep China's AI industry in the Stone Age as the U.S. and other Western nations advance. The limitations also prohibit the export of chip manufacturing tools and design software and forbid the top silicon fabs in the world, such as Taiwan's TSMC and Samsung, from producing cutting-edge chips for Chinese businesses. One of the provisions of Biden's executive order is that any U.S. citizen or green card holder working in China cannot work in the Chinese semiconductor industry or risk of losing American citizenship. Jordan Schneider's tweet said, The starting point for this round of sanction is to go all the way up the food chain and ensure the elimination of all American products and technologies from the entire ecosystem. This is what annihilation looks like. China's semiconductor manufacturing industry was reduced to zero overnight. Complete collapse, no chance of survival. The thread continued. Chinese officials described the U.S. limitations as a significant step intended to thwart the development of the nation. The decision might have wide-ranging effects, such as restricting the development of artificial intelligence that underpins algorithms for driverless vehicles and other risks. Although Biden knows Xi Jinping personally from his time as a vice president, but the bilateral relationship has been on a path of deterioration over the course of the last year. Avenues for cooperation, even conversation, have been all but frozen. U.S. officials have been intensely engaged in intent identifying and deploying tools to defend U.S. technology and economic know-how while blunting China's advances. The scale of the restrictions underscores an aggressive new stage in the U.S. effort to counter and block altogether critical elements of China's military power. It is no doubt the U.S. and China are decoupling. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.